Hi, welcome to The Final Stitch. I'm your host, Natalie, from Missouri Star Quilt Company, and today we're gonna to be talking about backing. So we've gotten a bunch of questions about backing from quilters like you, and we've gathered them together, and we have some answers. So let's start with our first question. Okay, so our first question comes from Christine in Utah. She says, when you talk about how much backing you'll need for a quilt and you say something like five and a half yards, how do I actually piece that together for my backing? Okay, so typically when we suggest a yardage amount on a pattern, we're talking about 45 inch wide fabric. And that would just be your standard quilter's cotton that you buy on the yard or by the, by the yard on the bolt. Um, and it, it's what you'd buy for border backing, uh, binding, it's 45 inches wide. So when we say five and three quarter yards or six yards, typically what we mean for is to take that whole length and fold it in half. And I'll show you that right here. We've got this piece just as an, an example. This isn't quite five yards, but when you open it up, so these are your selvage edges, and this is the 45 inch width that we're talking about. So normally what you'll do, and it, in the pattern, it will say vertical or horizontal seams. And that depends on how wide and how long your quilt is. Each individual quilt is gonna measure a little bit differently. But, um, but if you have your 45 wide and you put those pieces together, we normally are going to fold it in half like this. So you're gonna to wanna to stitch along the edge of the selvage edge. Make sure you have at least a quarter inch or a half an inch, whatever you feel comfortable with. It's an inside seam, so you may wanna press it to the side or press it flat open. That's completely quilter's preference. Um, and then all you're gonna do is cut that fold and you can cut it with scissors. Often we will have someone hold the end and just slide your scissor through, it's super easy. But if you're, if you're quilting by yourself, you could fold that back in half and lay it down on your, on your cutting mat and just cut just the edge of the fold off, make sure, making sure that it's nice and straight. Then when you open that up, you're gonna have a piece that is 90 wide by half of the length of your yardage. So if we've asked for six yards, this is gonna end up being 90 by three yards, which is 108. So you'll have a piece that's 90 by 108. And that works with, with um, all of the measurements. Now, if you have a, a backing or a quilt that is wider than 90, that's when you get into needing like three three yard cuts that you piece in rows. So at that point, would you recommend going to a wide backing and show us um, Yeah, typically at, at that point, unless you have like nine yards of fabric lying around that you want to use up, you're going to get, at nine yards, your quilt backing will be huge. And, um, and I think probably for less effort and less money, you can just buy three yards of a wide back. And we have, there are so many beautiful wide backs on the market right now. Like you can get solids, you can get prints, you can get batiks. Almost every type of fabric has a wide back option available and they're beautiful. Okay, and so what happens to if maybe I don't have something that needs a wide backing, but I have a wide backing because I don't necessarily want to sew a 45. That works okay too? Yeah, oh yeah. Yep, you can always use that. Okay, awesome. So one of the other things that people sometimes ask about is directional fabric. Oh yeah, so that's really fun. That. So directional fabric is great. It's beautiful on a back and it's really fun. The thing that you wanna remember with directional fabric is you can't just fold it in half. You would actually wanna cut those pieces ahead of time and then put them together facing the right direction. So this piece right here, let me get rid of that. This is a beautiful sewing machine print by Tula Pink, who I love. Um, and so you would want to cut your two pieces off in, in separate sections. Because uh, if you fold so, it, then half your machines are upside down. Right, okay. right. So half your machines will be upside down if you do it on the fold. So then what you want to do is you take your total amount of yardage and you're going to cut that in half and then put them together right sides facing, but making sure so you can see that this, this is the top of your little sewing machine set here. So you're going to open, them, open it up like this and you're gonna line these up this way. So see this one is still right side facing and then you'll put them together like that. 
then you still just being sew on the being fully aware yeah still sew on the selvage edge and you'll end up with the same size but with your sewing machines all going in the same direction so sometimes if i'm not feeling up to cutting the fabric ahead of time i will just go ahead and fold it in half and have one half going up and one half going down and it doesn't bother me one bit i just i like to think it's quirky and it makes the quilt kind of reversible you can use yeah. either side it's just no big deal so that's another question too when you have a nice big print like these sewing machines do you ha feel like you have to line them up magically or do you just kind of go for it i don't personally feel like i have to line them up because i'm not really worried about that but if you did want to do that you would want to find um you'd want to offset them so you'd need a little bit of extra yardage i mean i would say at least an extra yard so that you have room to play with that and i would probably try to line them up before you cut maybe while it's still in one piece and find the place where they line up together first now the other thing that you want to remember is that you're going to have a seam allowance in there so you need at least a quarter inch to a half inch of overlap and you're going to want to pin and just do your best but um it takes a lot of patience <laughs> i will say and it looks super cute it just does it look up. super cute either lined up or not lined up but what you'd want to do is just find where the repeat repeats so you can see like these two hearts line up. So then if you, if you pick like an area, then you're going to want to put that right on top of it like that. And then you can just pin that and stitch on top of it to make it look like a, well, there it is right there. So see how you'd have like a little bit hang of hang off down here and a little bit of hang off over here. Um, that's the way that you would be able to line those things up. And so then once you found this, this sweet spot where everything looks really pretty, that is where you're going to want to put your pin. And on, honestly, if I was doing it, I would probably press the line so that I knew for sure where I, would, where I wanted to put that seam. And then you could follow Because, the yeah, then you have like a pressing line and you know that it's gonna line up just how you want it. And I, I would probably not go this far in because I wouldn't want to use that much fabric, but if you can match it up here, then you know that you can pull it apart and it will still match up over here. So, um, so you just have to find like that, that place that works. Uh, like gotcha. about, about like that. You know, so you may, lose, you may lose a little bit of yardage on this piece, but then not the other piece. You pick one, one side to get as far out to the edge as you can. And then the other side, you kind of just adjust until it looks right. Gotcha. Yeah, but it's not, it's not super important to do that, I don't think, because I think having it, having it line up just like this is cute, but I also think that having it just, you know, just line up like this is also cute. Right. And I don't think anybody's really gonna notice if, you're, if your pattern is a little bit offset in the middle of the back of your quilt. Especially once it's quilted. Yeah, it just doesn't show up that much. So maybe if you're making something to enter into, you know, like the most amazing quilt contest you could ever even imagine. But for day-to-day -day quilting, I probably wouldn't stress about it too much. Awesome. Thanks. Okay, so thanks. So, so we have some other questions about the kinds of fabrics you can use for backing. Okay. So I see you have some other fabrics next to you. Um, can we use batiks as backing? Is there a problem with that? I do not have any problem with using a batik as a backing. In fact, I've used them several times and they do come in beautiful wide backs as well. Um, the tricky part with batiks for me is making sure that all of my seams are on the same side because sometimes you can't tell the right side from the wrong side on a batik mm -hmm. fabric. But um, other than that, I treat them just like regular quilters cotton. They're beautiful. They don't really need to be pre-washed. They're just just, ready to just go. the same yeah ready to go and then you've got some smaller prints too you can yeah tonal prints are good um, and they're great because you don't have to worry too much about upside down or right side up you just just piece them together our next question comes from Carol in Missouri and she's asking about piecing backing with a little extra she says I have a couple blocks I didn't use on the front of my quilt and I'd like to use them on the back how do I piece the back so they look beautiful and don't look like a mistake. Oh, okay. So this I think is really where pieced backings get so fun because you can put a block, you can put um, a row, a piece from a maybe a border type fabric. You can do stripes, you can do 
so many things. Like it gets really exciting. The, the possibilities are endless. There's just a, like a few little things to remember when you put um, blocks or labels or different types of pieces uh, on your quilt back. You wanna make sure that you don't have anything that is trying to frame the quilt because of how quilts are loaded. And that typically that, rem that depends on how you're gonna have it quilted. So I do a lot of sending my quilts to the quilter and the quilters typically will load the quilt at the top and the middle. So it's top center, which means that you can't, um, you can't guarantee that it'll be a certain amount down or side to side even because it's not always exact. So when you're doing something like that, you either want to put it like straight down the middle uh, vertically or straight across the middle horizontally or off to one side so that when you get the quilt back and it's trimmed, if it's a little to one way or the other from what you had imagined, it's no big deal because you planned it like that. So let me show you a cute example. I have a great quilt that has some blocks pieced into it. And, um, and this is super fun, you will love it. So this quilt backing is quite large and she had some extra tulip blocks and they went right down the middle. And what I love about this, so these blocks are pieced straight down the middle and then right up here at the top, let me pull this other side up so you can see, and the bottom, the blocks don't go all the way out to the edge. So she leaves plenty of space for the top of the quilt and the bottom of the quilt by adding this little piece up here. And really it's, it's as free, as, it's actually even more free really than making your quilt your front because you can do whatever you want. You can add big pieces here or small pieces there. You know, you can add sashings, whatever you wanna do as long as you make sure that the part you want on your quilt is centered enough but not centered on purpose. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Because yeah. If you have so you ha it loaded top center, but you need it to be low enough that it's not going to cut off part of your block. Right. Or right. trim it in a funky way that's going to make you not happy. That will yeah. be the part that makes it. So, so one of the rules, probably this is what I would go by, because we often hear quilters say you need at least eight inches all the way around for your backing. I would make sure that I didn't have a pattern eight inches from the top or eight inches from the bottom or the sides. I would... I would just let that fabric kind of go off and imagine that it will be cut off. That's a good tip. Does so that make sense? Imagine because an imaginary border. Uh, right, even there. though it's not technically loaded that way. So, so if you have the same amount of fabric here as you have at the bottom, the top side is gonna have more of it and the bottom side, it may be cut off completely. It really depends because as you're rolling those pieces of fabric, the, the backing and the front roll at slightly different rates and the quilting, depending on how dense it is, will shrink the quilt top um, and the, the backing. And it kind of just moves around a little bit. It's like, a, I mean, it's, it's art. And so it's not going to be perfect. And you can't expect exactly the same results every time you do it. Right. So you just want to make sure that you leave enough room for those types of expected changes that you won't be disappointed when you get it back and, you know, see that, that the backing shifted one way or the other. So offset on purpose. So yes. You're happy that it's offset. Exactly. Perfect. And they're they're so beautiful. So beautiful when they're done. I love Almost it. It's like a reversible quilt, right? Totally. Yep. Where the back is as interesting as the front. I love it. So I have another one to show you that has um, a strip from a panel. This is a, a quilt. I believe it was made with a panel. So you can see all the beautiful panel squares on the front that are fussy cut and gorgeous and then on the back she had extra fabric and put a stripe of it straight across the middle so you can see that when she did this she knew she needed enough at the top and enough at the bottom and this stripe is not centered straight in the middle it's closer to the top which is very cool and I actually don't know you know how much of it was cut off when it was quilted and it goes all the way out to the edge so it doesn't look at all like there's any kind of mistake or movement it just looks beautiful and it combines these two great prints. So she didn't have to have, you know, six or eight yards of one print. She was able to combine two different prints from her stash or her collection. And it just looks gorgeous. And it totally looks intentional. Totally intentional. It's just beautiful. Awesome. And it makes it just another fun thing, almost like a little quilt secret. Like 
you don't know what's on the back. <laughs> it's just as cute as the front. So I love that. So that's another good tip. You can use a border stripe. Yes. Or just a nice to just piece two different fabrics together. And there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that at all. It doesn't Absolutely. All have to be the same fabric. No, I've done a ton of different fabrics. In fact, I I prefer to do that because I like the backs to be funky. You know? Yeah. Just just interesting to me. It's a little bit more interesting. Can you do that with something that's not full yardage? Yes. Yes. One of my favorite quilts that I made a long time ago when um, I didn't necessarily, this is one of my personal quilts I'm going to show you. I didn't necessarily have access to a ton of yardage, but I had a lot of sample. Um, like I had a fat quarter bundle that I was working with, and then I had some other yardage pieces. And so I actually just put together a whole bunch of squares of fabric and strips of pieces that I had in my stash until the back was big enough. And it is so colorful and so fun and just like really full of different interesting squares. So, you know, the front, the front is just an easy charm square quilt and I wanted the back to be just as interesting. So I literally pieced them together till it was big enough to cover the quilt. And you, I didn't have a pattern. I didn't, you know, you have to make sure at some point that like your stripe, your strips are the same width, but that's it. And that's kind of something you can even trim as you go. <laughs> like, yeah. okay, we're working with a, a 12 inch strip here and then we're gonna add a 18 inch strip and we're gonna add a five inch strip. And just until it's long enough and wide enough, honestly, like there's no rules. <laughs> Do whatever you want. It's super fun and interesting and cute. So one of my favorite thing about backings is that there really are no rules. You can be as creative as you want and do lots of different things that are um, just variable from every quilt that you make. So we are super excited to see what you guys make and I hope that you share your projects with us. That's right. So we talked about today vertical and horizontal seams. So you can do yep. one big piece if you have fabric, you can use batiks. You can mm -hmm. use great big prints. You can line them up or not. They're still going to look right. beautiful. That's right. That's right. You can go all the way to 108 wide backing, uh -huh. or you can start piecing with all kinds of things. And the best advice we have is offset it on purpose. Yes. So that it looks intentional and then it is intentional. Right. And, and remember, if you are, if you're quilting it yourself, you can a thousand percent line it up however you want to. But if you're sending it off to a quilter, it'll go top center. So um, think about where that's going to land. It's probably going to be two to three inches from the top. Um, you know, if this, if this is the center of your quilt back, your quilt top is probably going to land somewhere down around here. And they'll line up those two midpoints and everything else will get trimmed off. And then you'll have this so, beautiful quilt. And you, yeah. can, you can do anything. There's no rules. Have fun. Totally. Yes. Lots of fun. And Enjoy it. It can be as much fun as, as piecing the top. Yeah, and show <laughs> us what you make. Tell us in the comments what you like to do when you're piecing and ask us questions because we want to have more questions from great quilters like you for next time. Yep, 100%. We'd love to have your questions. Thanks so much for joining me today. See you next time.